So now what we want is a way to calculate the entropy change if we have an ideal gas. So remember, this is still talking about things that if we don't have a table available to just look up the entropy, we need a way to calculate it. And so if we have, and we don't have tables available for all the different types of gases. So this is how we're going to calculate the change in entropy if we have an ideal gas. So first we're gonna start with the TDS relationship. So TDS is equal to DU plus P dV. And the first thing I wanna do is divide by temperature. So if we do that, DS is equal to DU over T plus P dV over T. And then one thing that we can replace right away is that DU is equal to the heat capacity dT, so C sub V dT. So DU is equal to C sub V dT. And the other thing that we can look at, since we're dealing with an ideal gas, so the ideal gas law, PV, is equal to RT, what we're going to do is, like, so if we look at this right here, we have P over T. So what I want to do is rearrange the ideal gas law, so I have P over T. So if I do that, P over T is equal to R over the specific volume. And so then we can replace this into there for P over T. And so if we do that, we get that ds is equal to c sub v dt over t plus r over v dv. And so this is the differential form of our equation. We're actually interested in the change. So what we want to do is integrate to get the entropy change. So if we integrate this, we get the so ds, so this is just S2 minus S1, is equal to C sub V dt over T plus R over V dV. And the first thing that we're going to recognize is that R is constant. This is just the gas constant. So we can pull that out and integrate that. And then C, with C sub V, so we have the same problem in the, we, so we kind of have a relationship between, so we do have a relationship for C sub V of T on table A dash two. We could get an equation and then integrate. But we don't really want to use that. What we want to do is, so don't want to use this unless you're told to. So what you want to do is assume constant C sub V at average temperature. So basically we're going to assume that C sub V is constant, so then we can pull it out of the integration. So then we're going to get S2 minus S1 is equal to, and so we pulled C sub V out because we assumed it was constant. So then we just have dT over T plus, and we pulled R out because it is constant. It's just a gas constant, D sub V over V. So now we can integrate this, and we get that... 2 minus S1 is equal to C sub V natural log T2 over T1 plus R natural log V2 over V1. So this is the equation that you're going to use to find the entropy change of an ideal gas. So entropy change of an ideal gas. And then what I want to do is there's also an alternate form of this equation. So let's look at the alternate form. 
So what we're going to do is start with the other TDS relationship. So the other TDS relationship is equal to, so TDS is equal to DH minus VDP. So DH, well, uh, first of all, let's divide T through like we did before. So DS is equal to DH over T minus VDP over T. And so DH is just equal to C sub P DT. And then also, since we're dealing with an ideal gas, we know that the ideal gas law is PV is equal to RT. And so what we want to do is solve the gas law. So we have V over T. So V over T is equal to R over P, and then we're just going to replace V over T in that equation with R over P. So if we do that, we get that DS is equal to C sub P DT over T minus R over P DP. And then what we want to do is integrate this like before. So ds is equal to s2 minus s1. This is equal to c sub p dt over t minus r dp over p. And so right away, we know that we can pull the gas constant out of our integration since it's constant. And we're also going to assume a constant um, specific heat at room temperature. So assume constant C sub P at, well, either at average temperature or room temperature. So if we do that, we can pull the specific heat out of the integration. So then we get S2 minus S1 is equal to C sub P dt over t minus, and the r is out here, dp over p. So now we can integrate these to get s2 minus s1 is equal to c sub p natural log t2 over t1 minus r natural log p2 over p1. And so this is the basically the second, the alternate equation that you can use for ideal gases. So alternate equation to calculate delta S for ideal gases. And so the question is, well, which one do you use? The one that you use just depends on what data you have. So for instance, if you have pressure data, then you would want to use this form of the equation. But if you have volume data, then you're going to want to use this form of the equation. So really, they, like, they both calculate the same thing. It just depends on what data you have available. And just real quick, I want to go back to um, this. So this, I'm going to write that out again. So S2 minus S1 is equal to 2 C sub P dt over T. Um, I'll just write out the equation. So R P dp. So this right here, this is a special integral. It's called the S function or it's also called the isentropic compression function. And so if you have problems where you have an ideal gas of air, oxygen, etc., then there is some table data available for those um, with entropy. And these tables, so I'm just going to put problems for 
for ideal gas. So air, there's, so there's an air table, an oxygen table. So basically, if you have a table with entropy data available, then on these tables, there's also data for this function. So also has data for C sub P dt over T. And so this is written like this. So S is equal to 0 to T C sub P of T dt over t. And so then your equation becomes s2 minus s1 is equal to s2 minus s1 minus r natural log p2 over p1. So you don't need to use this. I just wanted to show you this because this data is on the table. But you don't need to use this. So um, I would actually recommend using either this form. At this point, I would recommend using this form of the equation or this form of the equation, just depending on the data that you have available. But I just wanted to show you this other this um, S function because you will see that on the tables. And another thing I want to point out is that all of these equations apply so all of these equations apply to open and closed systems.